and go. Am I, why am I on? Are you not the superstar of the trustees? <laughs> Seriously, we're live again? Uh, you know, after I don't know how many videos we've done, we're never going to get this figured out. I so, think we're figuring it out. You're just doing the surprise I'm on camera thing all well, the time. this is his show tonight, not mine. It's not really. So, we are the trustees. I'm Chris. I'm Tony. That's hard. That's, uh... This is Mamba. Yeah, it's Jack Daniels. <laughs> JD. Okay. So, happy Saturday, everybody. So, here is what's going on with us. Tony has joined a, what? Long Distance Riding Club. Did you flip it? I am going to hand this to my wife and I'll do my part. That's got hair in my mouth. Don't press the buttons. So, you'll notice I'm wearing a new vest. Mainly because I joined this club, got to know uh, Miguel, who's Lobo, from this riding club. I followed him a couple of years ago when he did this long ride. I was like curious about what he was doing. He started with this long ride that went from Queens, New York, which is where his company that makes this, these vests is from. And he drove his bike all the way out here to Sturgis, uh, Montana, all these places out here in the Rocky Mountains, and then he made his way up the Alcan to Alaska and went to Prudhoe Bay. He got up there and he rented a different bike because his Harley obviously wasn't going to do well on that dirt road. It's not even gravel, it's dirt. And he rode it all the way to Prudhoe Bay and I followed his journey doing that and got really interested in it. Well, recently he started a riding club that's basically meant for people that are long distance riders, which I am. I've done this most of my riding life, I ride great distances for fun, um, not just thinking around town. Um, so he uh, started this club portion of it to try and, I think, do two things, promote his business, and two, get more people together as a group, kind of get a community built together for people that do the same thing. So I was totally interested in that, so I joined his new uh, long distance riding club and I'm putting this vest together, um, certain requirements. We got the first couple things done on it. You'll notice the flag, which is cool. He likes that. I still have my name patch, which is going to be an army style black and white patch. And then there's another one over the top that's going to be a Molon Lobby patch over that one. And then uh, I'm going to have two Viking for my Viking heritage. I'm going to have one on the side here that's going to be the compass, the Viking compass that they use. It's going to be a circle patch there. And on this side is going to be another one, but it's going to be, uh, oh, what was the other one that I was doing? Oh, it's the tree of life, basically. is another symbol of theirs that's going to be on the other side. So I have my Viking heritage. <laughs> so I have my Viking heritage on the vest as well. Um... There's also another thing where you can either put, for every country you've ridden long distance in, you can have a little uh, one and a half inch flag for every country that you've done it in, or you can choose to do it by every state or province if you're from Canada, and put all those in there. Well, I choose to do, since we do most of our riding here in America, we haven't really done much outside. I've only done Canada and the U.S. So... I'm going to do the states, and so far I've ridden long distance trips in uh, 22 states. So I'm going to have all these, I'm going to have 22 little state flags, which are going to go on the bottom here. They just kind of go across the bottom, and then you'll see the actual logo patches on the back. Go to the left a little bit more, yeah, okay. So that's what that part, you'll see all the flags down here. And once I get that done, I'll put it up for everyone to look at so they can see what it looks like completed, my version of the vest. And so I'm going to take the camera, and Chris is going to go into her sewing room. What's up? I knew you were going to get a close-up. Anyway, we're going to take this into the sewing room. She's going to explain her sewing process. 
I need to explain how to sew this. You're going to show everyone your little setup. I already talked to her about this, and now she's acting surprised again. Kind of like the surprised to be on the camera every time thing that she does. So, take it away. I don't know what I'm doing. You're just showing your room I'm... and what you're doing. Oh, I've already shown everybody my room. <laughs> yeah, that's me slouching my shoulders. I apologize. <laughs> She's supposed to show, this is her equipment, this is the, how much it takes to sew through this. It's actually oh, a lighter vest than it, yeah, expected. This was, like, this was actually pretty simple to sew through. Um, I don't know why I got to egg her on. For, for, as far as um, sewing on patches goes, we, we have leather, uh, leather um, vests too, and that's not a lot of fun to sew a patch on because it's not, um, doesn't move around very well, and it's a little thicker to get through, but... This was denim with just kind of like a flannel um, inside, so um, it was pretty simple to, to sew through. It's just that this was a little detailed. But I do applique, so um, with my quilting, so it wasn't that complicated to do, and you can't even, I mean, you literally can't tell that I sewed this. So it, they, they actually did a really good job on the patches, so you could hide, you know, where you sewed so it didn't take long maybe an hour hour and a half i think i don't know but it was pretty simple you just pin it on and you roll and i just used a um a denim needle so. standard sewing machine didn't take anything big to do it no most of the leather jackets a lot of people will bend needles or hurt themselves in the process because it's so hard to get these uh vests sewn on properly if you don't have the right equipment for it yeah well to get them underneath even and this you had to you know you had to be strategic putting this even underneath that because there's the the this is a lot thicker here and i had a hard time getting that underneath um my foot so i kind of had to work from the top or from the bottom and pull it through that way but my my quilting table comes off so that i have you know like the shoulder here so it's not like it's a big deal but okay. sewing the flags is going to be interesting. Yeah, one and an inch, one and an inch uh, sized flags, little tiny things. They're going to go all the way up. Twenty-two of them. I yeah. can't wait to see her struggle through that one. Yeah. So I don't know how I'm going to. I don't know how I'm going to do that. Are they all one color, or are they all different? No, they're all the state flags. Right. So they're going to be little detailed flags. I don't really care about the color of the thread on those. It's. It's going to have to be white or something just to be uniform. No, I'll just use my transparent thread. I have transparent thread, so I'll okay. just use that. But, so that's it. So I've got some rags in the mix. I'm working on a quilt for my mom and dad, and I think that's it. Yeah, and tomorrow we have a project going on So for Trusty's Image. Yeah. So it's a busy weekend. It is. It's no days off. Crazy windy today, and so... Had a little bit of rain. Yeah. Tomorrow's supposed to be pretty nice. You're, you're like wrinkling your forehead. You're like, see? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So I guess that's really all we got. Okay. No real big adventure today, guys. Nope. Just thought I'd show a little bit into that and explain it a little bit. Oh, and I did make tonight. Uh, fish and chips in my air fryer, and it was delish. What does that have to do with motorcycling? I'm and... just throwing that out there, just so any of my air fryer on the fence peeps, they want to know. All right. So, anyways, that's it. Okay. See you tomorrow. Later.